So I wanted to show you this growy shower faucet. I really think it's a nice system, especially for anybody elderly, something that you want to be simple. So a couple things about this. One, it's push button. So you can see you have the indicators here. We got our handheld and we got our rain shower head. And what's really awesome is that this stops at 100 degrees. And then if you want to turn it hotter, you have to press the button to make it hotter. But what really you can do is just set this at the temperature you want and leave it and don't do anything. And then just when somebody wants to take a shower, just press the button and it'll warm up. The other thing about this is that it, you can take, change the volume control by turning the knobs. So this will change, adjust the pressure on it. So if you want to save a little bit of water, turn it down and then turn it all the way up if you want. So push button really makes it simple. But I think what's really awesome is that you can keep this at the temperature you want. Just press the button and you're good to go. This is uh, the growy box. Basically the hot and cold come in through the bottom here. And this thing can do all types of different configurations when it comes to your shower system. In this particular bathroom, all they're doing is a shower head and a handheld. So it's really kind of simple in that aspect, but you can add three different features. You can connect another one together so that you have multiple valves for body sprays and all types of things. So uh, we'll show you how to install this. Really awesome little device and really, I mean, a wide range for where the depth needs to be. So I'm excited to show you the installation of this stuff. Okay, so of course my framing is always in the way of my new center. Um, <laughs> just always seems to be, be the way that it is. So we're gonna cut out these two studs. Um, this is an interior wall. Obviously you can see this is kind of a, an odd configuration where it doesn't go all the way up to the ceiling. But what, what I'm gonna do is just basically cut this, get some plywood for my backing and that'll space this out far enough to put this valve in. So let's go ahead and cut this first. Basically, we want this to be 15 inches center off the, the base, or off of the corner. And then we're, we're gonna just gonna go 45 inches to the center. I think it's gonna be easier for the client when it's a little bit lower. Sometimes I go way up to 40, 48 inches, but I think in this circumstance, I think 45 is gonna be more user-friendly for this. Okay, so that should bring us out pretty nice and even. We just have to be in the center of that, so we're gonna basically have half inch backer board, about a half inch with the tile with the thin set. So about an inch, inch and a quarter at most. It's kind of hard to predict the uh, thin set layer, but as long as you're somewhere within the middle of this, you should be good. Okay, so make sure you pay attention to the top of this. It kind of gives you the indications of everything. So we're gonna be doing the shower head and a handheld. So we have to port port A, we have to put a blocker on A. But these are all the other configurations that you can have. <clears throat> so just know, you know, just pay attention to what you're actually using. So this is A, so we wanna cap it. So what you wanna do is use Teflon tape and a little bit of pipe sealant. So go clockwise around your plug and use a little bit of pipe sealant So that one's capped. And then we'll go ahead and just use some regular PEX adapters for the rest. Okay, so we're gonna have to make some 90s to bring this over. So just regular half inch by half inch 90s. OK, 
Okay, and at this point, just check all your fittings, make sure the go-go gauge goes over them. Alright, so then we're going to be centered on this as well. So right by here, and we want to be a little bit higher than what it was before. It used to be 78, we're going to go 82, we're going to go right here. shower port I think we'll just put it about three and a half inches away from the wall and I usually like to do about 60 inches but just the fact that he might be sitting down on a chair and needing longer hose I'm gonna just keep it maybe maybe just right here at 46 for my port so it's lower and has more extension to come to the back of the shower so we'll put a block here basically I like to set my block about an inch and a half behind here and then that'll bring this port about three quarters of an inch behind the rough-in framing. If you set your block an inch and a half behind here that works out well. So let me just get a block 12 and an eighth then when I put this on here this will be about a half inch behind my rough-in framing so then I have about an inch for my tile and that's can vary depending on the thin set layer. So you usually a two inch brass nipple will work if I do it in this fashion. So let's go ahead and mount this block. Three and a half inches usually works fine from the wall. We'll get a couple shut off ports so we can make sure we test everything. Is it all right? I don't see any leaks. Do you hear it? I hear it. Okay. All right, yeah, I just wasn't sure how that shut off. So. Okay, so these clips, this is basically support for around the um, the valve. So when I put my backer board on, I'll be able to seal to the unit as well. So that's all you, you can just keep adjusting this to make it fit your wall opening. But as you can see where my rough end framing is, I'll basically have an inch beyond this because I'll have half inch backer board plus the tile. So I'll probably be out at my maximum area. So depending on your thin set layer. Now you could always still buffer this out a little bit further if you wanted to, but that's gonna work just fine for us. Well, first, I like to get my port in first so I can flush out the system. Uh, so I like to put both of my ports in before I put any of the shower heads in. So let's go ahead and take our plug out. Oh my God. It sure doesn't. 
Okay, so we got a two and a half inch brass nipple. Let's see where that takes us when we put it into our port. This one works out. So there's a, a variance with where we can have this port. So that's really kind of nice for a, a shower port because we could basically use a two inch or a two and a half inch brass nipple and that's gonna work. So we first wanna make sure that we address our piping here. Going clockwise, four to five revolutions on either side. And basically that's just so that when you thread this in, the Teflon tape goes with the joint. And then on top of that, we'll put a little bit of pipe sealant. So this T2 pipe sealant, just put a little, ever a little bit on there. That'll just help ensure a nice connection here. You don't need a whole lot of it, just need enough to cover those threads. Okay. This has a little gasket that goes on it. So make sure you have, it's not gonna go all the way around. I'm just gonna have the bottom part left out so that if water does get behind there, it'll leave thing. But this is a pretty watertight connection with that little gasket we have on there. Same thing with the shower head. Let's get this out. So we can flush out the line before we put the shower head on. Okay, so Teflon tape on the shower head as well. Four to five revolution clockwise. Get a little pipe sealant on there. Go ahead and cut our this basically gets cut with the flush with the tile. So this little has a little package of uh, lubrication here. Put that on these gaskets. So put these two top screws in so you can establish levelness. It's level where the buttons won't look right. There you go. Tighten the screws. Okay, so these are the push button valves. So when you have these unhooked, nothing will come out. But in order to turn them on, you need to turn them clockwise. So this turns it on. So when you press a button in, it turns it off. So make sure that both of these are turned clockwise in order to get the water turned on. So this is gonna be your shower head. This is gonna be your handheld. 
before we put any of the discussion plates on, we need to turn this gut volume or this uh, temperature gauge up and make it 100 degrees. So let's just turn on our, we'll just turn this clockwise so that we can turn on our water to our um, handheld slowly. And then we're gonna gauge this and get 100 degrees. So we wanna turn this down to 100 degrees. There's 101, 102, almost 103 there. So we wanna turn this down just turn this big knob clockwise and that'll turn down the temperature. And then we want to just make sure that we get it turned down to 100 degrees. Okay, there's 100 degrees. So that's where we want to leave it. So you got these little apparatuses. They have a little square knob on them. So you just press that onto this. Okay. Turn this off, you won't have that problem. Okay, so this is your kind of extension discussion plate, if you want to call it that. So this just slides right over your port here. And now the, this is going to get screwed into place here through these screws, and this is going to seal against it. But these little buttons here thread on to your valve stems that are going to be push button. The problem is, is most of the time they're not going to be, they're going to be out too far. So this is going to, we basically have to count the threads. So make sure that it's out first in the out position. Same with this. So that's the in position, out position. Now, now with this in place, count how many threads back to the finished surface of this chrome discussion plate. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven threads that we have to cut. And on this side, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's exactly the same thing. So we have to cut these down. This is probably the worst part of this system. Everything else about it is great, but why they make you cut these plastic things is beyond me, but that's the way it is. So, so we wanna take this off and again, just counting these one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so before we Put that on, let's just go ahead and put this, before we cut the other one, let's just make sure that this is gonna work all right. So you cut that on there, and then this little sleeve has a little divot back here, that slides right on there. And again, it's in the off position when you have this turned left. But let's just go ahead and thread, well, let's go ahead and put our, or our discussion cover. So you can see that green hanging out of there. That still means it's, that I still need to take a little bit more out of it. And so that'll be the same thing on the other side. Basically you just want to see the white because that's all going to show. I mean, this, this discussion plate basically just goes over here and then that's what, that's what you're going to see. So you want to make sure that that's cut back farther. Okay, so this is, in, this is interesting. This is pretty cool actually, because this will give you volume control of how much water flow you get, okay? So when you're twisting these, this will turn the water flow off. If you turn this all the way clockwise, it turns the whole thing off. So just turn this all the way full power, which would be the entire clockway position. And then I'll show you, there's this little indicator here. 
So this is what's going to allow you to turn it. So this will be sl slid into this sleeve back here that has a little groove on it. So there's a little groove here and this slides right into that. And that, that'll allow you to turn and volume control the unit. So put this back on. If this is only one direction you could put it on here. Basically this little the indicator here that moves it indicates with the back but turn your, your valve all the way on clockwise and you line this up with everything to, to the left direction. So when you slide this on here, it will allow you to do the volume control. These will go into the box. that easy. Okay, so this is the volume control. So when you turn it right, you can see how when I turn it to the counterclockwise position, it's a little slow. And this guy, so this little button right here, just make sure that's in the upward position. So what this does is that this is 100 degrees. And then when you, when you press the button in, it allows you to get beyond that basically a way to keep you from scalding yourself. So if somebody comes in here, they just turn this on up to that button, it's 100 degrees, and then they press the button and it goes the rest for that. They did not, they did not give you much room around that at all. Like you had to have your towel perfect around there. I would have been screwed. Oh, yeah, like the, the cutting. Yeah. Piece, that one piece was Yeah, big. yeah, no, right. Yeah. No, it, it, there's, no there's no allowance at all. All right, and I have a little button. All right, so if you want it cold, turn it all the way to the right. If you want it hot, turn it all the way to the left. So you have to press that button to get past that. But, Pretty cool. Okay, so just make sure you have your gasket in there. As long as there's that gasket in there, you shouldn't need any Teflon tape for this. Okay, so we're gonna have our handheld and the only thing I would just pay attention to is kind of remember where you ran your piping over. So we ran this down and over and up. So I would just be careful of that. But we're going to put it right underneath the shelf. So something like that. And the main reason I'm leaving it down low like this is so that if he's sitting on the bench, he can, he can grab it. All right, so something like, something like that. Twenty four and three sixteen or five sixteenths. Twenty four and five sixteen. 